Hi guys, I'm Raj Sanger of Car Security. Welcome to another episode of Raj's Garage. Today, I'm going to be talking about my Ferrari 355 F1. Okay, so why a 355? Well, I have to go back a little bit further and talk about the journey that got me into the 355. I started off with a Ferrari 360 F1 back in 2005, picture here. Lovely car, Rosa Corsa, black leather interior. Had that for a couple of years. Moved into a Ferrari 430, again, F1 box, picture here. Rosa Corsa, cream interior, paddle shift gearbox, fantastic, so much better than the 360 gearbox. Uh, I think I need like 10,000 miles in that car. Absolutely love that car. Sold that, moved into an Audi R8. Again, picture here. Uh, modified that. Wheels, KW suspension, exhaust, seats. Again, fantastic car. But still lusted for a Ferrari. Now, having done the 360 and the 430, I thought, I want to go classic. Uh, when you start looking at the classic Ferraris, you're looking at 308s, 328s, 348s, 355s, Testarossas. Now, arguably, in my opinion, this is the best looking classic Ferrari, the 355. Fantastic lines, pop-up headlights, obviously so cool and retro, 80s, 90s look, and started looking for a 355. Sold the Audi R8, that was back in 2014. Started looking at 355s. Definitely wanted Rosa Corsa. Wasn't too fussed about interior color, black, cream, wasn't fussed at all. Again, wasn't too fussed about the gearbox, manual or F1. I actually prefer the F1, having owned the 360 and the 430. I know the purists out there will say, well, you should have really gone for a manual. I wasn't too bothered. Started looking, saw a few cars, prices were starting to creep up, so I was very careful that I didn't want to overpay uh, in that particular market. Saw this car at a dealership in, I believe it was Southampton. Went and had a look. It's a 1998. S registration, F1 box, had 19,000 miles on the car, did a deal. I wanted to subtly modify the car. These cars look fantastic out of the box. There's not really much you can do to them. Had to change the wheels, it's what we do. And at that time, being the Rotiform distributor, naturally was gonna go for a set of Rotiform wheels. Did, decided on a set of 19 inch ROCs, Pirelli tires, 225, 35 on the front, 265, 35 on the back. Lowered the car on the stock suspension. Didn't really want to go too aggressive. Didn't want to upset the handling of the car. And really all else I've done is just change the stereo and added a tracking system. I have toyed with changing the exhaust, maybe a Capristo or a Tubi and adding a challenge grill, but I don't drive the car enough. Having owned the car five and a half years, I think I've put less than two and a half thousand miles on the car. I know a lot of you are saying that's sacrilege, but it is what it is, just haven't driven the car. So while this is a stunning looking car, it's actually that glorious sounding V8 engine that really sets this car apart from many of the Ferraris and many of the supercars of that era. So let's have a look at that engine bay. So here we have it, 3.5 V8, producing about 380 brake horsepower. Stock, I've done nothing to it. As I said, not even changed the exhaust. When you're just toodling along, up to say 5,000 revs, it doesn't sound that great. But that sweet spot is at 5,000 and above, all the way up to 8,500 revs. It goes crazy. You can, if you want, drive this in auto, being an F1 box. I'm, I never have. But one of my friends has, he used it as a wedding car. And I asked him the day after, I said, well, did you enjoy it? He goes, well, I just stuck it in auto and drove along and just drove it like Miss Daisy. But that's not what this car's about. We'll go out in a bit and you can hear that engine noise. Okay, servicing. Now I know that's a bit of a scary word for a lot of people when they start looking at classic Ferraris. 
it's not that bad. Ultimately, it's down to the base car. This being a very low mileage vehicle, it'd been maintained exceptionally well throughout its life. If it is 50,000 miles and above, there's obviously gonna be perishables and so on that would have needed replacing. I've not had to do anything to this car bar just standard service and the cam belt service. Now the cam belt service isn't cheap. That needs to be done religiously every three to four years. Cost about two and a half thousand pounds. Why so much? Well, you have to drop the engine. Hence why that cost. So other than that, I've really had to do nothing to this car. I've probably been very lucky, but I've not driven it as I said, so maybe that's probably why I've been lucky. So I'll tell you what, let's get in the car. Let's go for a drive. Let's listen to that V8 soundtrack. And then you'll have an understanding of what I'm talking about. Going for a leisurely drive, let the car warm up. Um, so when this car came out mid 90s, Ferrari supercar, uh, Porsche had their supercar, which was the 993 Turbo. And I do actually own a 993 Turbo, and we'll talk about that in another video. Similar age cars, but two totally different cars. The way the 993 Turbo drives is totally different to the way the 355 drives. Um, but let's get back to the 355, eh? F1 paddle shift box. Damn. Pretty decent gear changes there, pretty quick. Obviously, nothing by modern standards. It's not a dual clutch, it's not a PDK, it's a single clutch, but pretty quick. And that's not even in sport mode either. Maybe I should hit the sport button, what do you think? That's pretty sick actually. <laughs> Okay guys, that's a wrap. Thanks for watching a video about my 355F1. If you like, hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell notification. The next episode will be featuring my 964 Turbo, bad boys. There it is in all its glory. See you soon, bye.